Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Last time we discussed about basic history taking skills and I feel many people felt interested in it and it was encouraging for me. So I was, I was pushed to do advanced history taking skills. So let me quickly do a brief review for basic skills what we discussed last time. So the reason for consultation, history of present illness, past medical history, family history, social history, and medications, which is very important, especially for the physicians. And when we write down medications, it's the formula, dose, and timing. So based on this history, you can actually get to the point of what should be the advanced history taking skills. So when it comes to that, it means more bulk to your primary history. So most of our part of that is the review of symptoms. So what does that mean as you, you are asking systematic questions based on the initial you know, uh, history, uh, based on what you want to look for. So it could be the general symptoms is what we usually start with. If there is any weight loss, any history of fever or sweating, it could be from top to bottom and in any scheme you would like. But what I follow is central nervous system, cardiovascular, respiratory, gastrointestinal, renal, joints, skin, ophthalmology, and ENT. And then you can populate based on what patient is having. You don't need to write down everything. So what I do is to get the pertinent detail and try to put those in a box, in a box of particular pathology. Then the other part of the advanced history taking skills is workup in the past, especially if it's a follow up patient or a patient who has a chronic history. There's no need to document, uh, but we need to get through the Sometimes there are a lot of pages, it could be 100 or more pages of um, investigations that patient brought for you to review. I quickly skimmed through it to look for the pertinent uh, uh, labs done in the past which is related to my field, like in neurology or in neuromuscular. So I look for any particular imaging done, I look for any blood workup done uh, pertinent to the question patient came to me for. So also there could be electrophysiology and I try to document all those details in a chronological order. So try to follow a scheme when you write down or document your history. Which brings us to the, the core of history taking. Because if you take a lot of details from the patient, you even uh, organized it in your mind, but if you haven't jotted it down on a, uh, on a paper or you haven't put it down in the electronic medical record system, it would be wasted. So you, anyone who gonna see that patient again has to do the whole job. So I think the basic purpose of having electronic medical record is to get the details once, document it nicely, so you don't have to get through those details again and again. So when I do documentation of the patient, I look for the paragraphing. So if a patient is coming in with headache, I get the headache detail, but if the patient is additionally mentioning about dizziness, I make a separate paragraph and get the details of the dizziness. If the patient is having some memory issues, I try to make a separate paragraph and write down those details. If that's a primary detail relating to review of symptoms, then you no, no need to go into the depth of it and making the paragraphs, you can just document in review of symptoms. And try to avoid too much detail. I know many colleagues, especially when I was working in the US, who write down a lot of detail, even you lose interest as you start reading through the history. So it should be in a way that is just like a beautiful story and it should be short and sweet. So try to avoid too much detail. And when you are unclear about what patient was trying to tell you, use patient's lingo. So you don't need to uh, put in your own words, you can just use patient's word to write it down in your history to communicate the idea of what patient was actually meant when patient was talking about that. And try to funnel down your history so as a reader is reading your history, as a third party, they should be having the idea what you're thinking, or what's going on in your brain, or what, what your differential is in this particular case. And try to follow a scheme, because when you follow a scheme, it saves time. And most of the part when you're taking history is to save your time at that point and in the future. But it should be in a schematic manner, so you don't lose your time getting detail which is not related. And then try to write down pertinent negatives. So you got a good detail of a patient who's having Parkinson's disease, 
And then you have to write down if there was any history of falls, because it may be related to a progressive supranuclear palsy, or it could be some other detail which is pertinent, like double vision. Okay, so try to put down the pertinent negatives are there, or pertinent positives which were seen in that patient. And try to build the knowledge of symptoms, because that's, I think, the core that with the passive time, as your knowledge increases about different diseases and their pathology, you try to kind of stick to particular questions. If patient gives you some detail in the start, then you get to the pertinent points and you finish off very nicely. And then you have to document those details in a way that when somebody is reading the story, they really know what's going on with the patient. I hope it will be very helpful for medical students and also for the junior residents who are getting into the history taking skills. And again, I will reiterate, avoid too much detail because the reader lose interest when they are reading that history. Also, I would like to uh, uh, really remember my colleagues who taught me the skill of history taking, especially David Uskovich and Derek Reba, who taught me how to get a pertinent focused history and how I can organize it in a way that it becomes a pleasant experience for the reader to read afterwards. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Shalom